months ago, John Major, yet today, he leads a government seemingly more divided than ever before. Is this the last stand? On Sunday at 12.30, John Humphreys puts the Prime Minister on the record. The main evening news now on BBC One with Peter Sissons at 9 o'clock. John Major's government has effectively lost its majority in the House of Commons. One of its backbenchers, Sir John Gorst, is withdrawing his support over the closure in his constituency of a hospital casualty unit. 14 billion is wiped off share prices in the stock market's biggest one-day fall for four years. And an inquest jury finds that the man whose death in custody sparked last year's Brixton riots died an accidental death. The 21-seat majority with which John Major came to power effectively disappeared today, not with a bang over Europe, but as the result of a row over the closure of a North London casualty unit. The upshot was that the local MP, the Conservative backbencher Sir John Gorst, told Tory party managers that although he wasn't resigning the party whip, he was withdrawing cooperation and they could no longer rely on his vote. Labour said Sir John's action left the government with no authority, and that it would now take the first opportunity to remove the Conservatives from office. There are 651 seats in Parliament. Four of those are taken by the Speaker and her deputies, and two are vacant, awaiting by-elections. That leaves 645. The Conservatives, until today, held 323. Labour have 271. The Liberal Democrats, 26. The Ulster parties and the Scottish and Welsh Nationalists, 25 between them. A total of 322. John Gorst's move effectively means the government no longer has a parliamentary majority on which it can rely. Our political editor, Robin Oakley, reports. The government itself might well be in search of a casualty unit after the battering it's taken this week. Now the fight by local MPs to save Edgware Hospital's emergency unit has multiplied Mr Major's problems. Insisting that ministers have cheated on their promises, Hendon North MP Sir John Gorst says that he's withdrawn his cooperation. The government can no longer count on his support. My first obligation is to my constituents. Um, I suppose uh, I also have an obligation, certainly, uh, to the nation. But I don't put the survival of my party above the survival of individuals uh, whose lives may be put at risk. Asked if after Sir John's action the government could hope now to last until next May, the Deputy Prime Minister was confident they could. If the Labour Party believed they could beat us, they'd put down a vote of confidence. What John is doing is fighting for a constituency interest, and all of us respect members of Parliament who have to do that, but equally members of Parliament respect that ministers have to take national decisions which are sometimes inconvenient for individual backbenchers. But the opposition's promising to harry the government from office. Well, you can rest assured that we'll take the first opportunity to get rid of this government. It has no authority in the country at large, but we're still a minority party. We have to get the agreement of the other political parties, but it can't be long now, and we'll certainly take the first opportunity to get rid of them. The government will be absolutely unable to sustain its majority in Parliament. And if that's the case, staggering on for four months becomes a far more remote possibility, and a general election earlier becomes a much more real possibility. The opposition will now demand equal representation on committees processing government legislation. And another Tory MP, Terry Dix, is threatening, again, to resign the whip over Europe, accusing the Prime Minister of being the helmsman on the Titanic. But in his constituency, Mr Major reiterated he'd keep his options open on the single European currency. I understand people's concerns about that because I share many of their concerns about that. But you aren't going to solve those problems by not negotiating in Europe. You aren't going to solve those problems by standing on the sidelines. You aren't going to solve those problems by denying the British national interest of taking part in negotiations and producing an outcome that is right for Britain. And the I Prime Minister, who will be interviewed on the BBC's On the Record on Sunday and who will meet the Irish Prime Minister on Monday, faces a testing time next week. On Wednesday and Thursday, the government must face its critics in a two-day debate ahead of the next EU summit in Dublin. Thursday also sees the by-election in Labour-held Barnsley East,
which should put another Labour MP in Parliament and confirm the government's minority position. The week ends with the Dublin summit, where Mr Major will be able to indulge in some tough talking to please his Eurosceptics, but where he'll be in a minority of one on many issues. The Tory party's tensions on Europe, though, show no sign of abating. We have to accept the majority will, and the majority will of the parliamentary party is now quite clear. We want to go with the tide of British public opinion, and we want to rule out a single currency and win the general election on that basis. It's been a grim week for the Tories, with their splits showing all the way to the top, and ministers forced to rush out statements insisting they haven't fallen out. Opinion polls have shown no benefit to the government from the budget, its last trump card, and the Conservative revolt on the single currency appears to be growing. Now the parliamentary arithmetic too is stacking against Mr Major, decreasing the odds on an election earlier than May. Robin Oakley, BBC News, Westminster.